Hailing from Denmark, senior forward Maria Jespersen is the longest tenured European-born player on the team. Everything we've done the last three years was not enough. So like, you just have to like keep pushing. You can't have a bad practice. You can't have a bad weights and conditioning. Like it doesn't matter. You have to do like all the small things to like to get where you want to be. Her unmistakable blonde braid and penchant for double doubles has played a key role in USF success, but she's still hungry. And that's 15 points for Maria Jesperson with the three. She now has a thousand points on her career. Setting scoring records is only a byproduct of her team first attitude. For the people that might be watching this, that have been a support for me and for the team, I just want to say thank you a thousand times. My experience here has never been, like wouldn't, wouldn't have been possible without them. Her play this season has been recognized as Jesperson was named a finalist for the Katrina McLean Award, recognizing the top power forwards in women's college basketball. It's here in the netting in the hardwood. Bulls basketball in Tampa's home for basketball where the squeaks of sneaks bring fans to their feet. A court where bulls can run and make their mark. Define a legacy while bringing glory to South Florida. One university, two teams, fueled by effort and passion. And these bulls won't be held back. This is their city. This is their time, bringing the national spotlight to Tampa while continuing to add to the ever-growing success of South Florida athletics. USF basketball, run with the Bulls. This segment of USF basketball, run with the Bulls, is brought to you by AT&T. AT&T is a proud sponsor of USF Athletics. Switch to AT&T Wireless and DirecTV today and stay connected all season long. AT&T, entertainment your way. It's a bit rare to step out of the conference this late in the season to take on a top 20 team. But that was South Florida's assignment as the 22nd ranked Bulls played host to number 13 Ohio State of the Big Ten. There was an electricity to the buildup. ESPN2 would send it out to a national audience. Both teams were on four game winning streaks and the Bulls had a little extra hop in their step with a chance to win their 20th of the season against a Buckeye squad that had just won their 20th. These are the kinds of games you play college basketball for. These are the kinds of games coach Jose Fernandez has built his reputation on. The two schools had played only once before, back in 1982. Several generations of bragging rights were on the line, and the Sun Dome roared with anticipation. Kitty Aloxa was more than ready to step into that spotlight. With this kind of atmosphere, it's easy to see why the Bulls have lost only one home game all season. There were plenty of challenges to be met. The Buckeyes ranked third nationally in scoring but the Bulls would be the team to light it up in the first quarter, and it didn't take long for the competitive juices to flow. Oh, I'm ready. This is such a big chance. Look at these two going at it in the jump ball circle. Laya Flores. Hit box that starts it off with a three. Oh, what a great start for the Bulls. From the first seconds of the game, it was apparent the Bulls had brought their shooting touch from outside and in closer to the hoop. They dominated all aspects of the quarter, setting the tone for a matinee masterpiece. Bad pass by Mavanga. Jesperson gets the pass and locks a wide open for three, and she makes it! Maria Jesperson from Kit locks up. Shots were falling from every board on the floor. Flores, the floater in the paint. The Bulls' compete level was off the charts. They battled through an Ohio State defense that held their last four opponents below 40% shooting. The Bulls would be better than that from behind the arc. And it was under these realities that Loxa would have a career game. Loxa drives, ducks in, ducks back out, and pops it in. Kent Loxa's off to a red hot start, seven points at 16 to 10. A little shake and bake off the glass again. 
And Kitty Alonsa having herself quite a start. Nine points, and the lead is 10. The whole building was in a celebratory mood, and that included birthday wishes for Henshaw. Who needs cake and ice cream with this kind of production? High low action and down low. Henshaw underneath, around the bunga and in. That was a tricky shot all the way around. The Bulls put up 31 first quarter points, almost as many as the Buckeyes scored the entire half. A workmanlike performance that at times was uncomfortable, but produced a very comfortable lead, earning a standing ovation at the break. But the well-coached Bulls knew there was a lot of basketball still to be played. 46-32 Bulls lead Ohio State, and here comes the hard part probably, right? <laughs> yeah. The Buckeyes angry and ready to try and come back. Loxa, red hot! It was a great sign for South Florida. Loxa picked up right where she left off before the break. Halftime did nothing to cool off the hot shooting Bulls. But this was not a one-dimensional effort. The USF defense made it a two-edged sword for Ohio State. I mean, I think it shows what we're capable of. I think everybody everybody on the team um, did their part today. I want to start out saying uh, Laura Ferreira today. We don't win without her. Her defense was tremendous. She does this every day for us, but today she had to go up against Mitchell and she just does a phenomenal job, and she should get a lot of credit for this game. The Ferreira thinks about a three, they drop it off the lock, so this is a big start, and it starts off three! We knew what was at stake. We you know, we were playing a top-ranked team, and we were waiting for this game all season long, because it's February, It's and we executed our game plan. We did a good job, and we defended the top scorer in the country, and I think for the, for the offensive end, I mean, just my teammates just found me. We did everything right, we did everything good. The ball was falling in, and at the same time, the crowd, the crowd was special. I think just because of the crowd, we won, because they were amazing. It has been a magical day, can the Bulls close it out? And it was missed, and Flores gets the rebound. No Mitchell in there, Flores lays it up and in! For the sixth straight season, the Bulls have hit the 20 win mark, perhaps never before in as sweet a fashion. Kitty Aloxa finished with a career high 41 points and would be named the National Player of the Week. Maria Jesperson pulled off her 13th double-double of the season, a major reason South Florida dominated the glass. All done in front of a raucous crowd in the building and a national audience on TV. You know, that was a, that was a great atmosphere here in the, in, in the Dome. I, I, I just think uh, really proud of our group, the way that we shared it. I know Kit had a special day, you know, having Maria and Kit shoot the ball as they did. But I'm really proud of our guys. That's a, I think it was a, uh, a great game for women's basketball on national TV as well. Great job! Good win. We got it now. We'll get back and start worrying about SMU. A coach's work is never done, but for this Sunday, a little March Madness was alive in February Fury. What is the culture of a program? It starts from the top. With an administration dedicated to building a program the right way, hiring not just great coaches, but craftsmen. A vision of long-term success, dedicated to cultivating something special, built to last. Sharp now, sharpen our defensive coverages. Make sure everybody's talking on our defensive coverages. All right? Uh, littles are there, the bigs are here. Let's go to work now. We're going 10 minutes to shoot, and then we're going right into live action. Down on three, one, two, three. Here we go now. Coach Brian Gregory laid the foundation with a strong team of coaches around him. Men who understand that beyond talent, it takes character to become champions. The young cast of USF are committed to developing their game, I'm back, back. Oh. their physicality, and academic success. Led by graduate transfers such as Stefan Jiggets, whose experience and attitude sets an example for his teammates, 
the Bulls are undoubtedly putting the pieces together. One pass, two passes, a third extra pass. Collins wide open, corner ball. 148 career victories at Dayton and Georgia Tech. He's done a great job of really keeping this team together, Mark. Well, he felt like they had to make some improvements off the court first, and he's building that foundation. Competing on the road is a test of composure as well as skill. Team chemistry and trust in each other are essential ingredients when taking the court in hostile environs. When the Bulls faced down the Huskies on their turf, they didn't back down. Rebounding and spreading the ball around leads to high percentage opportunities, and USF pushed the Huskies against the ropes, outscoring them in the second half and bringing the final score within three. You know, they, they gave such great effort. I, I thought, you know, that we, we got out of sorts a little bit, but, <clears throat> you know, we talk about <clears throat> the building blocks and what we're trying to do. You know, one good thing is I, I thought for the first time we got out of sorts and we rallied the troops and the guys stuck together and we kept fighting uh, and, uh, you know, played really well in the second half, you know, uh, did a lot of good things, got a lot of ba good basketball from a lot of different guys. Never satisfied with a loss, uh, very satisfied with the effort, very satisfied with the grit that we played with, you know, for our guys to embrace that, understand that, and continue the upward uh, trajectory of our, you know, performance. The momentum carried over to the Bulls' home matinee against rival Temple. With the USF faithful at their backs, Isaiah Manderson followed up his career high at UConn by scoring even more going nine for 12 from the field and dishing two assists. The senior had 18 points off the bench. We knew the challenges that we would face. Uh, and, and I just feel so proud of our guys because they came here understanding that. From the graduate transfers to the freshmen, they knew that we were gonna have a challenging year, but still wanted to be a part of it, still wanted to be a big piece of laying the, the correct foundation for the culture that we're building, the program that we want to build. Um, and so when you, you know, every single day, there's good, there's good moments that you, that you can recognize and you can mark down saying we're taking the, the proper steps forward. Our guys I know are going to be able to three, four, five years from now look back when the program's at the point that we all want it to be at and know that they all played a big role in that. But through the adversity, the Bulls have not lost their competitive edge. They know the challenges ahead and face them head on. With great examples set by the coaches and the senior leadership, the path ahead is clear. The Bulls are picking up speed. USF Basketball Run with the Bulls is brought to you by AT&T. AT&T is a proud sponsor of USF Athletics. AT&T, entertainment your way. By USF Health and the Florida Lottery. And by Tampa General Hospital. This segment of USF Basketball Run with the Bulls is brought to you by USF Health. Coaches Power Forward for Autism is a, an endeavor that myself and my uh, really good friend, my former assistant coach, Pat Scarry, who is currently the head coach at Towson University, we kind of brainstormed about five years ago, and uh, we both have a child, uh, both have a son uh, on the autism spectrum, and so we kind of brainstormed and tried to figure out a way, how can we use our roles as college basketball coaches to help enlighten people or, or make them aware of, of autism. So we kind of brainstormed and our first year we were kind of flying by the seat of our pants, literally. We targeted about 40 schools uh, that we thought were gonna, games that were gonna be on national television and we kind of said, hey, let's, let's see if they'll wear the blue puzzle piece uh, lapel pins to, as a symbol of their support. And from that point forward to now, it's just kind of gained unbelievable momentum. 
the puzzle piece pin uh, from Autism Speaks, it really became what we thought could be the symbol for our event. We came up with that because we both wear them frequently, uh, being parents of a child with autism. So, and now it's kind of become the staple for the weekend. Not only is he a great coach and great recruiter and just a great role model for our guys, but he's taught me a lot off the court as well in particular with the subject of autism. You know, we are moving in the right direction in terms of awareness, which I think he was a key component of that among college basketball coaches and players and administrators, and now to acceptance as well. And, you know, with his son Robert around our program, it's number one, it, it, he brings an unbelievable enthusiasm every day about our basketball program, about our guys. He, he'll know stats, he'll ask me questions, you know, why didn't Peyton make the, his normal percentage from the three in the last game? He's on top of his stuff. And the one thing it does do, it, it makes you realize that, you know, everybody has challenges, but also everybody has some special gifts. And, and our awareness is making those gifts come into light. Well, he's all in on this deal. He really embraces uh, the guys. He literally thinks these guys are some of his role models because he can touch them, he can interact with them on a daily basis. And so the impact that our players have on him, and as I said earlier, I think some of the impact that he has on them is kind of mutual. So I'm very fortunate to have had not only here, but other people I've worked with and have had work, worked with me as a head coach. They've all embraced this. We call ourselves a family, and it's, I think it's obviously, for me, it's, it's so reassuring to know that the environment that we've created is so healthy for everybody. Hey y'all, it's Justin. I'm back to show y'all the campus, give y'all a nice campus tour of USF. Beautiful campus. Right now we're passing the Mooma and the Sun Dome. Here's the gay day, the main entrance. Most of the fans enter through to come see us play. We're headed towards most of the main halls where I actually have class, so it'd be pretty cool to show y'all where I learn, get educated. We're heading up towards the Marvel Center. Student Health Clinic. Got everything you need there. If you just want to get you checked out, you might got a cold or something like that, you can go to the clinic. They'll take care of you right away. Student Services Building. Go get your new ID if you lose one. Right here you got the bookstore. Get all your books for the year. Um, they got Starbucks in there too. So, I mean, you're trying to get rejuvenated, you need some caffeine. You can also buy a bunch of whatever USF gear you need in there. You can go and get it at the bookstore. You got everything you need in there. And this is, I really like this part of campus. It's probably my favorite part of campus, to be honest. You got all, of the, all the palm trees. I love the palm trees. Over there, you got the fountains. Another, another really beautiful area of campus. Right here, this is what I like right here. This is, my, this is my favorite part of the whole campus right here. This part with the flowers and everything. It's really good on a sunny day. Just to look at this, it's, it's awesome. It's really cool. They really thought this out well. A lot of students like to hang out around this part of campus just because of how, how beautiful it is over here. A lot of people actually like to take pictures on the bull. I don't know if it's allowed to do or not, but a lot of people like doing that. It's a, I guess it's a tradition here at USF. A lot of people like to come on and ride the bull, if you will. And Marshall Center's right over here. You got everything in the Marshall Center. You got restaurants, you got um, pharmacy, you got video game areas, you got just places to chill out, hang out with your friends, study halls, everything in there. You got an auditorium in there. You got a nice beef of Brady's. Everything's in there. You got everything you need in the Marshall Center. It's just, it's pretty much just sums up this whole campus. Everything you need is here at USF, for sure. Here's one of my favorite parts of campus. It's the beach. This is a really peaceful part of campus. It's, it's probably one of the most well thought out things that this, this all university has built. You can just come over here, take a little nap, you know, on the hammock. It's just comfortable, you know. It's just paradise. Just chill out, read a book, you know, chill on your phone, watch a movie, 
do whatever you gotta do. I mean, I just I just love this part of campus just because there's a lot, it's a big campus and it's live all the time. And you can just come here and you kind of contrast, it kind of contrasts to the the aspect, the live aspect of the campus. And you can come here and be more peaceful and chill on this part of the campus right here at the beach. Well, I showed y'all a few of my favorite spots on campus. Right now I gotta head out, head out to practice. Go get better, can't be late. Thank you for thank you for coming with me. See y'all later. USF Basketball Run with the Bulls is brought to you by AT&T. AT&T is a proud sponsor of USF Athletics. AT&T, entertainment your way. By USF Health and the Florida Lottery. And by Tampa General Hospital. The dynamic duo of Kitty Aloxa and Maria Jesperson has paid dividends for Coach Fernandez's top 25 basketball squad. Both players are top 10 finalists in national award races for their respective positions, and USF fans will have the opportunity to vote for them if they make the final five. But it's not all about the personal glory. Their success stems from a coach who has developed his players to play as a team, and they take their championship attitude with them everywhere they go, whether it be the court, the weight room, or the classroom. Lox's career high 41 points against number 13 Ohio State netted her ESPNW's National Player of the Week. And I'm sure Charlie Cream would tell us that as well. Loxa, count it! 41 points and a new career high for Kitty Loxa.